Hello all, good morning. We are in Brussels in Belgium with the Manager of International Relations for BOSA, Digital Transformation Office in Belgium, Frank Lehmann. Frank, Hi, good, morning. good morning, thank you. So, first of all, when we are running the implementation of the EIF in Europe, we always go through different points, national, member states, mm -hmm. everything is involved in this. So. In the case of Belgium, to understand the e-government as, as it works, we really need to go through the first step is the federal state, which means that you bear in mind this in order to create these strategies at the regional level. So you started with one for the Wallonia Brussels Federation, another one for Bra Flanders, and the last one for Brussels Capital Region. How these strategies are going so far? Well, indeed, as you say, we are a federated state which means there are different levels of power and they are all at the same level. So there's not one that is above the other. So in, we have a federal level where, where I work, but there's, we have regions, we have communities. Uh, the only thing we did is just divide the responsibilities between these entities. I'll give you one example. Uh, national defense foreign affairs is typically federal level, but education is a community level. So the Prime Minister in Belgium has nothing to say about legislation about education. So that would be the head of the communities. So each of them, they have uh, created their uh, digital strategy. Um, and uh, yes, that uh, could very well be that uh, they have different accents and different priorities. What we try to do is uh, talk a lot with each other and make sure that it, uh, it is linked to each other, or at least that it is, there's uh, as much consistency as possible, so that for the citizen, it looks like one, let's we'll call it a virtual digital strategy. Okay, I, don't, I think it's not easy to gather all of them together, since you said about it, it's digital, it's simple, different It's priorities. a lot of talking anyway, and we need to yeah, understand each other and, mm. uh, and try to interact. Uh, but actually it's not going bad because if we go to the eco fact sheet in Belgium for 2018 we can see that the main priority for the for the federal government in Belgium is to do a single virtual public administration to provide integrated services across all the levels all these levels regionals yeah. one that we saw but um, you also uh, sign a cooperation agreement on the principles of a seamless e-government in April 2016 a few years have passed. What are the results of this? Yeah, well, actually this is exactly the result of what I just said uh, uh, in my first answer. The fact that we have all these different entities, um, there is some need uh, for cooperation and uh, to make uh, good agreements uh, and an understanding on uh, how we can work together, knowing that we each have our different responsibilities and, and priorities. So. What we do is we negotiate a cooperation agreement. We have signed uh, three up to now. They last on average for, uh, let's say, three years. Um, it's a politically loaded negotiation. So, uh, but once that is done, uh, we can become very productive. Uh, we are a bit uh, uh, away from the political uh, uh, ups and downs. Uh, and we can focus on producing. So we put on paper what we will do for the coming years, um, who will do what, who will finance what, uh, and that we put on paper in an agreement. And once that is done, we can become very productive. So uh, that's why uh, we, we, we try to, to have at least uh, this, this way of working together uh, put on, a, on, a, on an agreement in a paper. Sounds uh, really good. Actually, you you have been working on this since the early 2000s. It's a, again, it's a lot of talking and it's <laughs> negotiation, uh, and that's not always easy. But uh, once we are there, uh, we can become very productive. Yeah. And actually, that's one of the main roles of the digital uh, transformation offices, which uh, gathers all these talking, all these Amongst negotiations, others, yeah. agreements, and so on. And actually, they are providing this. Uh, they're implementing the, the Belgian digital agenda, but yeah. also they are providing support in the digitalization of public administrations. What is this kind of support? What is the role specifically of this uh, Digital Transformation Office? Well, the Digital Transformation Office um, 
actually does uh, what we did before. Before we were a separate uh, federal public service for ICT. Um, some one and a half years ago, the government uh, decided to merge the three horizontal cross ministries, which is budget, personnel and ICT into one organization. And uh, we, uh, at the same time, reorganized ourselves uh, into a digital transformation office. We still do the same as before, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, taking care of the back office and, and the security aspects, and making sure that everybody can talk uh, to everybody in a secure way. But we have shifted slightly uh, towards, uh, well, as the word says, digital transformation, mm -hmm. which in practice means that we go a little bit closer uh, to, to the citizen, to the, the industry, to our customers uh, between markets, uh, where we try to uh, uh, understand much better what he needs, how he would like to interact with us, uh, typically what you would call the user experience side uh, of it. We try to uh, uh, make sure that we, we understand this really well so that we can translate that into appropriate services. So as part of the ECOM strategy for Belgium in 2015, uh, Digital Belgium was introduced. So after two years and a half of implementation, what are the main results, the main figures we could highlight of this? Well, uh, yes indeed, uh, uh, my minister, Minister Alexander de Croo, is Minister of the Digital Agenda, he launched uh, his strategy which is called Digital Belgium. It is based on five pillars. Uh, and uh, we try to, to focus all our efforts on these five pillars. So uh, I'm going to take my notes just to give you <laughs> a few, a few uh, uh, informations on that. First pillar is the digital economy. We want to create a digital economy uh, where uh, everybody feels at ease to do e-commerce. And we've seen now that uh, the share of turnover of the Belgian companies that do uh, e-commerce uh, has uh, now grown up to over... 30%, exactly 31.4, where we were, uh, what, two years ago, close to only 25%. Second pillar is the digital infrastructure. We want to make sure that the whole uh, Belgian territory is equipped with uh, high-performing uh, uh, networks. Um, and there, I think we are very good uh, as a country. We have uh, a coverage of uh, fixed broadband of 99.93%, which is you could consider uh, almost the whole territory is, is really equipped with, with high-speed uh, uh, bandwidth. The third pillar is uh, skills and digital jobs. And there, I think like every European country, we, we, we need to uh, invest uh, thoroughly in that. We have measured that uh, two-thirds, 61% of the Belgians, have basic or uh, average digital skills. We could say that's okay. Uh, we consider that it is still there's still uh, room for improvement. So that we, if we build a full digital uh, society, uh, we need to have the hundred percent on board. So we will invest and continue investing in that. Uh, we are above the European average, which is fifty-seven, but still uh, we want we want to uh, keep on investing in that. The fourth pillar is on trust and digital security. Now also there, it's a, it's. I think it's a joint action of all the European countries uh, to work on this digital security. Um, we as Belgium, we, um, we tend to work with uh, external partners uh, to help us with this uh, security and protection of our network and of our data. Uh, so, which might be a bit different from what the average of Europe is doing, but at the end of the day, it's about the results. Uh, and, uh, um, also there, it's going to be a, a constant effort. And then finally, uh, the fifth pillar is digital government. We want to make sure that uh, the public sector as such uh, also uh, becomes uh, digital, that our services are digital. Uh, and uh, also there, actually, it's the core of what we do in our department, is to make sure that uh, digital government uh, gets uh, shaped. We uh, launched a digital dashboard, uh, which is a little website that, that shows you how, how we progress in there. Since day one, and day one is for us the day that our government started working. 
and uh, we've seen some spectacular progress. Uh, for instance, uh, the citizens, we measure uh, how, how much, how many times they do interact electronically or digitally with government. And uh, we've seen a growth of 152% compared to the last time. So we see the effect uh, of, of our efforts. For industry, our industry was already very digital, um, but we still seen an, an additional growth of 6%. But I would like to mention one little thing, which is e-invoicing. The e-invoicing has uh, got a, a huge boost of 275% compared to last time. So we are very happy with that figure. And then finally, uh, also government needs, is also a customer of us and uses our services, uh, maybe backup, backup services, uh, but that also has grown by 22%. So we've seen that in the five pillars, uh, we, we've made uh, significant progress uh, and uh, we intend to continue that uh, in the coming years. Okay, that's uh, what happens at national level, but then if we escalate a little bit and we go to the European level, we see that um, last year in Estonia, in the ta when we signed the ECOV Ministerial Declaration, mm -hmm. 32 EU countries committed to implement the digitalization of public administrations, and for that they enshrined the European Interoperability Framework as a yeah. roadmap for this. We understand that digitalizing public administrations is not easy, maybe at national level could be simpler than at an European level when you have to gather all the member states together, uh, all these strategies together. But now the question is, what are the challenges that Belgium specifically is uh, facing when trying to implement the European interoperability framework in the country? Well, for us, it's, uh, it's, it was actually very good news to, to see uh, the European interoperability framework. We consider Belgium a little bit as a little Europe with the fact that we have these regions and communities, we also need to work together, interact, um, become interoperable. So we consider ourselves a little bit uh, uh, Europe on a little scale, operationally. So uh, the EIF is just an extension of that. So for us, this is the continuity of what we have organized at, at Belgian level. Um, it has a lot of advantages uh, because it really describes in detail uh, every piece of the puzzle. Um, for us, it helps us a lot in, in two ways. Uh, first of all, we can uh, uh, compare what we have with what the EIF uh, is suggesting and see, for instance, what is missing. Try to understand uh, what is missing and, and how we could uh, complement it. Um, and uh, secondly, we also can look at it uh, in a way where we can well, we can notice the, for instance, duplicates, two different modules that are closely doing the same or overlapping. Um, also there, it allows us to analyze and to see uh, how we can reduce cost uh, in, in, in future by adapting more to the EIF tree uh, uh, as much as possible. So for us, it's, it's a really useful tool. Not only the EIF, we are aware of the fact that the DTO has also, Digital Transformation Office, uh, has also recently mapped their architecture upon their European Interoperability Reference Architecture. So what were the benefits after this mapping? Well, this, this was actually exactly what I just said, is uh, being able to find uh, the gaps and being able to see what is overlap. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, the, it allows us to become much more uh, efficient, specifically if you are looking to, to, to cross-border aspect that is also uh, on our plate. Um, if everybody would implement the EIF uh, the way it is suggested, it would make life easier to become uh, interoperable. So, uh, um, again, I'm repeating myself, but it, it's, it's a really useful tool. And now, <coughs> when you try to escalate the, the Belgian model to the European one, and you see what are the differences between um, the European one and Belgium, how do you see the global scenario? What do you think it should be the role of the European Commission at the implementation of the EIF and other policies, documents, in the implementation and boosting interoperability at European level? Well, uh, I would say continue giving us guidelines uh, mm. 
you're actually uh, some kind of a facilitator uh, towards the, the member states. So uh, uh, that role is important and we need it. We need somewhere, a place where we can put our strategies together, our architecture together and have a discussion on what uh, is the best way to go forward. So uh, that's uh, absolutely a role to play. Um, and uh, again, with the European single market uh, being uh, uh, one of the goals uh, at the very short uh, uh, future, uh, this is absolutely uh, um, uh, a role that we expect from the European Commission. Uh, the whole reference architecture is just allowing us to uh, check whether we are uh, on the right track. Uh, so uh, again, very useful for us. Okay. So Frank Lehmann, Manager of International Relations for a Digital Transformation Officer in uh, Belgium. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks. Thank you for keeping uh, Belgium interoperable and making everybody's lives easier. And um, well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. And stay tuned because more interviews will come, more news about interoperability will come. See you.